Ibrahim Mustafa is a highly sought after figure in the world of public speaking with over 30 books and years of experience as a coach, keynote speaker and author. He has established a reputation for delivering dynamic and engaging presentations. This combined with his work with prestigious organizations such as Astana Expo, World Economic Forum and Google has earned him a place among the most respected names in the industry. However, B. Ibrahim's impact extends far beyond the world of public speaking. He is also a philanthropist at heart, actively supporting numerous charitable projects and working tirelessly to make a positive impact in the world. Whether you're looking for an inspiring keynote speaker, a skilled public speaking coach, or an expert in the firm, Ibrahim Mustafa is the perfect choice. Don't miss the opportunity to book him for your next event and discover the difference for yourself. With his expertise and passion for public speaking, Ibrahim is sure to make a lasting impact on your audience and make you a great speaker. Hello and welcome to this session. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa and yet today I'm here to bring you the I Am Public Speaking Practice session with Ibrahim Mustafa. And if you are monitoring this, I'm live on YouTube, I'm live on LinkedIn, I'm live on different platforms that your hands can lay on in terms of social media following. Today, what are we talking about? Today, we're going to talk about the power of storytelling. We are going to comb that with our body language. The way we express ourselves, the type of stories we tell can make a difference in our presentation. So whoever you are, whatever you do, your presentation matters and you can actually make a lot of difference if you believe that, yes, you have that voice. If you don't even have that voice, you can learn. And that's why we are here, to practice, to speak, and to give each other the opportunity to learn from each other. So if you are here and you believe this is the time for you. Follow me. Share this. If you are monitoring on YouTube, thank you very much. That's where I make all the money. Thank you. I appreciate that. If you're also making on uh, Facebook, if you're also on LinkedIn, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it. If you're also on TikTok, I believe in you. So let's go straight for a commercial break. And we are going to talk more about how you can leverage using your body language and storytelling to enhance your public speaking. So let's go for that break and let's get back. I believe in you and I believe that you can make that difference. Let's go. Ibrahim Mustafa is a highly sought after figure in the world of public speaking with over 30 books and years of experience as a coach, keynote speaker and author. He has established a reputation for delivering dynamic and engaging presentations. This combined with his work with prestigious organizations such as Astana Expo, World Economic Forum, and Google has earned him a place among the most respected names in the industry. However, B. Ibrahim's impact extends far beyond the world of public speaking. He is also a philanthropist at heart, actively supporting numerous charitable projects and working tirelessly to make a positive impact in the world. Whether you're looking for an inspiring keynote speaker, a skilled public speaking coach, or an expert in the firm, Ibrahim Mustafa is the perfect choice. Don't miss the opportunity to book him for your next event and discover the difference for yourself. With his expertise and passion for public speaking, Ibrahim is sure to make a lasting impact on your audience and make you a great speaker. Right, welcome back. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa, and I'm going to share some one or two techniques with you that can help you in your next presentation to help you, maybe when it comes to body language. Your body language matters, and that's why when you go to some places, you actually have people 
who are body language experts who tell you that oh this person this is the body language this person this was the body language and they can be able to tell what are you authentic what are you telling the right thing or you are telling the wrong thing just based on your body language so people go beyond what you say to see in your body what are you using your body language to express and in public speaking if you are able to use your body language well you can make that in, uh, like difference, creating opportunities, appreciating that, yes, this is your body language and this is what you are going to express. Sometimes you go on stage unprepared and the more we are not prepared, the more people get to know that, yes, our body language shows that. So maybe you're on stage and you are always pulling your shirt. You're on stage and you are doing this. Uh, uh, um, mm. Like people know that you are not confident enough. People know that you are afraid. People know that you are scared. And that's the type of body language you are portraying. So there are things that you should never do once you are like speaking in public. Maybe when it comes to professional settings, maybe a professional speaking engagement, you need to take care of those things. One is putting your hands in your pocket. Like it doesn't sound professional when you are at space, uh, stages like uh, on stages like TEDx, you're not allowed to do that. And holding your hands this way, you're looking for comfort to maybe your nerves, whatever it is, you are looking for comfort to comfort yourself. So body language is key. And there are one or two things that you need to take care of. For example, if you are speaking, you need to always lift your hands up above your waist level. So this is a good body language posture. So it puts you in action. It gives you that edge to be able to do more. It gives you the opportunity to be able to reach out to more people in terms of like flexibility, in terms of gestures and stuff. So it's an important body language technique that if you understand, it is going to help you. So your eye contact is important. As a public speaking coach, eye contact is important. So the way you look in the crowd, the way you talk to people, the way you move, all makes a difference when you are speaking in public. So there are a few things that you can take care of in terms of learning how to take care of your body whilst you're on stage and preparing for the big presentation. For example, your dresser matters when it comes to speaking in like the corporate world. Speaking in the corporate world, unless you are telling me that your brand goes beyond that, then maybe sometimes you can just wear a branded shirt that depicts you. But you must be conscious about that. You must know that this is what I want to do, and this is the type of body language uh, that I'm going to signal to the world. In other parts of the world, we've seen presidents, before they go on stage to speak, they have body language experts who will tell them that if you go, this is our culture. Maybe it's America, maybe it's Russia, maybe it's this. If you are doing this, this is not what we are supposed to do. So if you even see in America, you will never see the president or someone visit the president, maybe a, a colleague president, and the president of that, uh, maybe the American president is walking in front and the other president is, no, it doesn't happen. The president must always let the visitors be in front so that they can be able to follow. And that shows that this is my home. So it's just a body language technique that people, they use to show prowess. So this is my home. I must make sure that you are comfortable before I close the door. So that's literally, that's what it means or something like that. But it's a body language type of thing. So you need to understand whether you are a corporate person, whether, whether you're into sales, whether you are into marketing, whatever profession that you are into, you need to understand the body language and the dynamics of that particular profession. So if you are moving, you need to move. If you are walking on stage, you need to make sure that there's a conscious effort to be able to do that. You don't need to be in a rush. Some people, maybe based on your profession, maybe if you're a footballer, I may expect you to be running the, uh, on stage, but that was like on a, a more jovial note. But then you need to walk majestically. You need to understand that, okay, this is the stage. And you need to even put the stage into different categories, maybe stage left, right, and the middle of the stage. You need to be able to put that into so that you can disperse your eye contact, pick some few people, speak to them on the left, 
do the same in the middle, talk to some few people and also pick yourself up and look in to the right direction. So these are some of the techniques that you can use to be able to watch your on stage, to be able to captivate your audience and grab their attention. The other thing that you need to appreciate is that if you can share this, that will help me also to reach out to more people. If you can also leave a comment so that I'll be able to glance through my laptop to see who is commenting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, great. Thank you very much. It says, good evening, Ibrahim Mustafa. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you can leave a comment and you can also share this to your friends and family because I'm speaking. I'm not able to use my phone effectively to share to family and friends. So you can be able to help me do that. But then we're talking about body language. If you understand the power of body language, you can win the public speaking game. It's a game of speaking, but then body language makes a junk of it. So if you're able to understand this and use your body language effectively, you can make a difference in your next presentation. So there are a lot of things that you can do. Maybe your how you appear on stage. It matters, right? It matters. The, uh, when I started speaking, I used to think that, oh, you can wear anything and go on stage and stuff. Until one day I was invited to speak. And it wasn't entirely my fault. I got to the hotel late, based on the description and the timing. And I couldn't dress up quickly. So I feel like, oh, I had some uh, wet Ghana t-shirt. Let me wear that because it looks corporate. I went there and every, all the people were in suits. They were wearing suits. Thank you very much. Have a bad man, Muhammad Abu Bakr. Thank you for doing the monitoring. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for liking. I appreciate. So when I went there, I, f I realized that all the people were wearing suits. They were suited up. Very nice looking. And me, the presenter, I was wearing something that is not suited up. So immediately, my self-confidence like, started to drop. When you see that type of setting, it calls for you to be able to like be worried. So I quickly had to do one or two calls, rush to one boutique, and got some suits. It was expensive, though, because, you know, retailers, this guy was there maybe for, the, uh, for one year. He has not sold any suit. But I had to just go and get some uh, top and just use that for that particular presentation. So it matters your body language. Sometimes if you are not well-dressed, if you are not well-prepared, if your mindset is not even in the game, you will end up messing up big time. So in your next presentation, make sure that in the planning process, you have what you want to wear. We just outline that and say, this is what I'm going to wear. This is the type of body language I'm going to carry there. And you do your audience analysis. It's important. Yes, speaking is important. You, you, you may be the expert in your fault, but before you go on stage, you need to do your audience analysis first. And uh, you need to ask questions. Who am I speaking to? How am I portraying that? And once you do those uh, analysis, it helps you to know who you are speaking to and the type of information you are going to give them. If I'm speaking to junior high students, it's a different thing altogether from me speaking to university students. If I'm speaking to university students, it's a different ball game from me speaking to corporate organizations. Even the corporate level, they are executives, they are managers. So if I'm speaking to managers, it's a different uh, public speaking game altogether especially when you get a chance to speak to CEOs or entrepreneurs. These are all like group of people that you need to look up to and prepare your speech or program and tell it to, to them. I may be doing the same public speaking training. And there were times I did public speaking training in the basic schools. Then the next day I had to go and do a public speaking training in one of the senior high schools. And the next week I had to do in a university. All this is public speaking, but I have to do it different, 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 prepare my presentation in different clusters, just because the audience and how they understand things is entirely different. And that is what uh, makes a lot of speakers struggle. You have one tailored presentation, just like if you are sending your CV and sending one CV to uh, MTN, one CV to Casapa or whatever it is, one CV to Ghana help. Yeah, like you may not get a job. 
Because all of these organizations, they have their language. And if you're able to speak that language, they will be able to employ you. So you need to also tailor your presentation like that. So i.e. do your audience analysis, ask all the questions, and sometimes just mark out one or two things. Mark out one or two things. Maybe you ask questions like, okay, the people I'm going to speak to, who are they? How much are they earning? That is also important in planning your presentation. Because people who are earning like hundreds, uh, hundreds cities, two, uh, like to 3,000 cities, their understanding may be different from people who are, learn, uh, who are earning above like 10,000 to 100,000 Ghana cities. So you need to prepare all this because the people who are earning like 100 to 1,000 or 1,000 to 2,000, they are in the survival mode. So they need one or two things that you can hammer to them so that they will get the understanding. But if you're speaking to CEOs, if you're speaking to entrepreneurs, they also need some type of language that you can speak to them. In any case, if you are speaking to doctors, if you are speaking to lawyers and doctors, it's a different thing altogether. So why am I telling you this? It's important to do your audience analysis. If you want to speak of power, if you want to uh, get that opportunity to sell your message, there's a difference between just speaking and communicating. You may be speaking all right. Your voice may be loud. You may be audible, but you're not communicating in the right message to your audience. So in this, I just want you to know that you can still communicate the right words, the right message to your audience if you plan, if you prepare, if you ask all the questions, and if you know what you are doing. That simply means that you research about your topic, you, are, you have some little experience about your topic, and you can start flowing when you are given the opportunity. And this is important. So if you have questions, uh, let me turn to my PC. If you have questions, you can leave those questions for me to answer. If you also have some concerns, if you also want to appear on stage and do a live public speaking practice, that is also allowed. My name once again is Ibrahim Mustafa. If you are monitoring from Facebook, you can follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on YouTube with the name Ibrahim Mustafa. And let us do more. I believe in you and I know that, yes, it's possible that we can do what we can do to make that difference. So we talk about body language techniques, how you can be able to grab your audience's attention. We talked about how you can be able to create opportunities in terms of doing your audience analysis. So let me go for a commercial break. I'm going to be back. Thank you very much. Ibrahim hey, Mustafa is a highly sought after figure in the world of public speaking with over 30 books and years of experience as a coach keynote speaker and author he has established a reputation for delivering dynamic and engaging presentations this combined with his work with prestigious organizations such as astana expo world economic forum and google has earned him a place among the most respected names in the industry however B. ibrahim's impact extends far beyond the world of public speaking. He is also a philanthropist at heart, actively supporting numerous charitable projects and working tirelessly to make a positive impact in the world. Whether you're looking for an inspiring keynote speaker, a skilled public speaking coach, or an expert in the firm, Ibrahim Mustafa is the perfect choice. Don't miss the opportunity to book him for your next event and discover the difference for yourself. With his expertise and passion for public speaking, Ibrahim is sure to make a lasting impact on your audience and make you a great speaker. Right. Thank you very much for doing the monitoring. Thank you, Magbash. Uh, thank you, uh, Abubakar. Thank you, uh, my good friend. Uh, let me get your name right. Uh, Konyefe. Kingsley, thank you. I appreciate. But we're talking about body language. Now let's transcend a little to the power of storytelling. Storytelling is important as speakers, and you need to learn to tell good stories. You grab your audience's attention by telling them the stories they need to hear. If you are not good in storytelling, you may not be able to communicate your message. And notice the purpose of you stepping up to speak is that you want to communicate your message to your audience. So if you are not able to do that, to tell good stories, you can't inspire. And that's why 
they have two speakers. They may be two speakers speaking, and one will move people to do something. But the other one, you even go home and you can't even remember what they said. Why? Because they don't understand the power of storytelling. And in a similar vein, you may have like two or three lecturers. Maybe look back in your school, maybe primary school, senior high school, university level. There are some lecturers that you've even forgotten about them. Right? But there's one particular lecturer that you will never forget about them. There are two types of lecturers, though. Those who cane you, those who didn't give you the pass mark. But then those we remember more are the people who give us those inspiring messages, those who have stories that they tell us, those who make us feel unique through their stories. They share, they share their experience in the teaching. They share personal touching experiences that we can relate with. And that is the power of storytelling. So if you know how to tell stories, you can be able to grab your audience's attention, create more opportunities, and do more based on the type of stories that you tell. So storytelling is important. We have two types of storytelling. Thank you for doing the monitoring. If you are monitoring on TikTok, thank you to my TikTokers. Uh, thank you for the amazing job. Thank you to people who are also monitoring on YouTube. Thank you to all of you for monitoring and doing the listening. But let's go back. Let's go a little far, if uh, like to tell stories. It's important that as a speaker you learn to pause. If you want to tell good stories, make sure you learn to incorporate pauses. And the more you pause, the more you grab your audience's attention. The more you pause, the more you create opportunities to be able to tell your next story. If you are someone who is talking, you speak and it's eh, 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 you have that mannerism, learn to incorporate pauses. So you pause, take some time before you say the next word. If not, if you are going to be speaking and you want to say the next word, it's like you are thinking about what to say next. And you are someone who is not even reading, whether reading books, you are not in the speaking game always. So there are some words you will forget them. But if you incorporate the power of pauses, you can grab your audience's attention. But let's go back to the power of uh, storytelling. We have two types of stories. And the first type is your personal stories. The stories that you tell people, the experiences that you've gone through, the challenges that you've gone through in life, the knowledge that you have. Maybe it's, you have accounting, you have public speaking skills, you have leadership. You can use that experience to share to your audience. That's number one. But then what a lot of people do is that they keep on speaking. And the more they keep on speaking, they do this. They start to tell the audience about their achievement first. Oh, so oh, I have this amount of money. I have these cars. I've been able to win this um, a number of hours. And people will see you as someone who is bragging. That's the first thing they will say, oh, this guy is bragging too much. But if you take them through a journey, if you give them that experience, if you give them that opportunity to be able to get that experience of a journey. So you look at them. If they are students, you look at them and say, okay, maybe they, they are going through a lot in life. If they are uh, uh, civil servants, you say, okay, maybe they are going through a lot in life. Or you just say, and you tell them experiences that can pick them up from where they are. So if you are speaking to university students, they are looking for jobs. After school, what next? They are looking to get like national service. They are looking to get opportunities and all those stuff. So that is their experience. And that's what they want to have as an experience. But then if you are speaking to primary school students, they may be looking for something to be able to pass their exams. That's their main name. Oh, what's it? B, C, whatever it is. That's what they will be looking at. So you need to tell their experiences. Look at where they are. Tell them the things that they need to do. Tell them the type of challenges you faced when you were there. And now you can lift it up to what you have achieved. What you have achieved. Thank you very much, Jamila. I appreciate it. So you can be able to tell them what you, they have, you have achieved. And then you pick it there. The next part of uh, storytelling, which is the second type of stories that you tell is the stories of products and services. So I can pick someone and tell that person's stories. I can pick Mark Zuckerberg and tell Mark Zuckerberg's stories about how he started. I can pick anybody 
and tell their story. So I'm telling the story because maybe that's other people's stories. Then I can equally just use maybe this phone. I can pick a phone and tell the story of a phone. Oh, this is Samsung phone. It's this You can be able to do this with that and stuff. And I'm selling the phone. I'm marketing the phone, telling the phone story. So you can pick either a person, individual, whatever it is, product and you or service and tell a stories. And that's the power that you have. So learn how to tell good stories, learn how to tell productive stories, learn how to create opportunities with your stories and do more of the power that you have. You can always create that opportunity. You can always create that rapport to be able to do more once you know and understand the power of storytelling. It's good to tell stories and stories must be touching. You need to touch stories, tell stories that are catchy, that are touching that are emotional, that can move your audience from point A to point B. And that's the power of public speaking. If your stories don't inspire, yes, you may be speaking, and that's why there's someone who may be speaking like for 10 good years, and he has never changed a single person. He has never even inspired a single person to do something. And then you, who maybe you've never even gotten a chance to speak, but you just stand up to speak, and in one or two sentences, you are able to move people to change their mindset to do one or two things. And that is important to me. And that's what we are talking about. So you need to understand the power of stories. You need to create opportunities for yourself. And you need to do more. So if you are here, you have questions, you can bring those questions here for me to answer. But then to my TikTok family, thank you very much for the support. Your support is overwhelming. And to people who are monitoring YouTube, you can always follow me to do more. I believe in you. Unfortunately, or unfortunately, this is where we'll end today's session for us to take videos, more videos. I want to do more videos and upload to, the, to you, my family, so that you get opportunity to enjoy more free content. So if you also want to enroll in my one-on-one course, coaching, check the link in wherever you are monitoring from, whether you are monitoring from YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, or Instagram. You can check the link in the bio to get the details of my course and all my books that you can buy. I believe in you and I believe in the power of your dreams. See you tomorrow by God's grace and let's do more. But go out, practice your public speaking. Go out, create opportunities for yourself. Go out and make a difference. This is a world of a difference. Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. Yes, there are people who are like this. There are people who, one, will be handsome than you. There's someone who will always be richer than you. There's someone who will always be beautiful than you. There's someone who will have whatever it is in terms of wisdom or knowledge or can speak more than you. But the fact is also that you also have something unique about you that you can bring into this world to make a difference. So once you have something unique that you can make a difference with in this world, why don't you focus on that? Create that opportunity, believe in yourself, show up, keep winning, and never stop. I believe in you and I believe in the power of your dreams. Go out and make a difference. Thank you very much for the support. I believe.